from Pacifica, this is Democracy Now! We're broadcasting from Washington, D.C. Under President Bush's authority, they've been going into countries, not talking to the ambassador or to the CIA station chief, and finding people on a list and executing them and leaving. Pulitzer Prize-winning investigative journalist Seymour Hersh created a stir last month when he said the Bush administration ran an executive assassination ring that reported directly to Vice President Dick Cheney. He'll join us today to explain and to talk about his latest article in The New Yorker magazine, Syria Calling, the Obama administration's chance to engage in a Middle East peace. Then the woman behind the New Deal. Francis Perkins who was President Franklin Roosevelt's Secretary of Labor and the first woman to serve in the cabinet, a great hero of the New Deal. We'll speak with author Kirsten Downey about the life of Francis Perkins, FDR's Secretary of Labor, and his moral conscience. All that and more coming up. Welcome to Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. President Barack Obama has ordered General Motors and Chrysler to accelerate their restructuring efforts and brace for possible bankruptcy. Obama spoke Monday, hours after the White House forced GM CEO Rick Wagoner to resign and ordered Chrysler to complete an alliance with the Italian automaker Fiat. Now, what we're asking for is difficult. It will require hard choices by companies. It will require unions and workers who've already made extraordinarily painful concessions to do more. It will require creditors to recognize that they can't hold out for the prospect of endless government bailouts. It'll have to, it, will, it will require efforts from a whole host of other stakeholders, including dealers and suppliers. Only then can we ask American taxpayers, who've already put up so much of their hard-earned money, to once more invest in a revitalized auto industry. Obama administration officials say they're weighing a fix for GM and Chrysler that would divide their good and bad assets and send the automakers into bankruptcy. If GM declared bankruptcy, up to a million employees, dependents, retirees and their spouses could lose health care and retirement benefits. A bankruptcy judge recently allowed car parts supplier Delphi to cancel health care and life insurance benefits for retirees, calling the moves, quote, good business judgment. During his address on Monday, President Obama said nothing about protecting the benefits of workers and retirees. GM shares plunged 25 percent on Monday, and the Dow Jones Industrial Average fell 3.3 percent. President Obama said there's no plan to nationalize General Motors. Let me be clear. The United States government has no interest in running GM. We have no intention of running GM. What we are interested in is giving GM an opportunity to finally make those much-needed changes that will let them emerge from this crisis a stronger and more competitive company. Michigan lawmakers, including Democratic Senator Carl Levin and Republican Congress member Thaddeus McCotter, said there is a double standard in terms of treatment of the financial industry compared with the auto industry. The government's not yet required any banks to replace its top executives. While GM CEO Rick Wagner is being forced to resign, he still stands to make millions. ABC News reports Wagner will be eligible to collect $20 million in retirement benefits from General Motors. Officials from more than 70 countries are meeting in the Netherlands to discuss the future of Afghanistan. All of Afghanistan's neighbors, including Iran, are attending. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton is expected to ask conference delegates for their country's support for Washington's escalation of the war. President Obama has said he plans to send an extra 17,000 soldiers and 4,000 advisors to Afghanistan. The Red Cross has warned the planned U.S. surge is likely to mean more civilian casualties. The Red Cross urged the conference to, quote, consider the plight of civilians as a matter of urgency. On Monday, U.S. Special Envoy Richard Holbrook spoke about the importance of Iran's role in the summit. The presence of Iran here is obvious. How can you talk about Afghanistan and exclude one of the countries that's a bordering, neighboring state? Uh, this is absolutely clear. Uh, 
the creation of the current government in Afghanistan in the bond negotiations of 2002 involved Iran, and they played an important role. And when the Dutch government decided to invite them, it seemed to us to be the most logical thing in the world. Syed Javad Jawed of the Agency Coordinating Body for Afghan Relief called on the international community to fight government corruption. Normally, you know, the security is coming if you have a good governance. So we would ask the international community to work for the good government, which provides situation for development, and that will guarantee the security. Iraqi and U.S. soldiers have completely disarmed a group of Sunni fighters following an uprising in Baghdad, led by members of the Awakening Council, a group of former insurgents now on the U.S. Iraqi payroll. This marks the first time an Awakening Council has been forcibly disbanded in the capital. Iraqi security officials said 80 Sunni fighters have been detained. The military operation is almost complete. There are some wanted men, those who attack the military forces, and they will be arrested. We are working now in returning civilian service back to the area. We have made a call to the people of Al Fadil, urging them to open the shops and resume normal life. In other Iraq news, a U.S. sergeant has been convicted of murder in the execution style slayings of four bound and blindfolded Iraqi detainees in 2007. Time magazine has uncovered more details of an Israeli military attack on Sudan in mid-January. Time reports Israeli fighter bombers, backed by unmanned drones, bombed a 23-truck convoy in the Sudanese desert. Israeli sources told the magazine the convoy was allegedly transporting Iranian arms to Gaza. The Israeli military has decided to end its internal investigation into reports that Israeli troops killed innocent Palestinians during the assault on Gaza. The probe was launched after IDF soldiers were quoted in Israeli newspapers saying combat troops in Gaza fired at unarmed Palestinian civilians and vandalized property during the attack on Gaza. Military Advocate General Brigadier General Avichai Mendelbit said such claims were inaccurate and based on hearsay. Meanwhile, two Palestinians died earlier today in an Israeli airstrike on Gaza. The Obama administration's announced plans to release a Yemeni doctor from Guantanamo just days before his habeas petition was scheduled to be heard in federal court. Dr. Ayman Batarfi is an orthopedic surgeon who's been held since 2002. Batarfi said he was a humanitarian worker who found himself at the Battle of Tora Bora while Osama bin Laden was in the area. In North Korea, two detained U.S. journalists will reportedly be put on trial on charges of illegal entry and hostile acts. The two reporters, Yuna Li and Laura Leng, were detained along the Chinese border on March 17th. The reporters work for Al Gore's current TV. In education news, Boston College has barred University of Illinois professor Bill Ayers from speaking on campus. The former member of the Weather Underground was originally scheduled to give a speech last night, but it was canceled by school administrators, citing safety concerns. The school was also prevented Ayers from giving his talk by satellite. Ayers was scheduled to speak about urban schools and educational inequities. Boston College student Melissa Roberts said, quote, it's an unconscionable violation of academic freedom on a college campus, which should be a place where all ideas are welcome, not just popular ones," she said. Meanwhile, a Canadian judge has upheld Ottawa's decision to ban British parliamentarian George Galloway from entering the country to conduct a speaking tour. Galloway has been a vocal critic of the U.S. wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, as well as the Israeli government. Canadian officials accuse Galloway of giving financial support to Hamas and offering sympathy to the Taliban. Canadian officials claim he's a threat to national security. Last night, Galloway spoke to an audience in Toronto via the Internet. USA Today reports the Environmental Protection Agency is expected to announce plans today to monitor the air outside 62 schools in 22 states. The plan marks the most sweeping effort to determine whether toxic chemicals permeate the air school children breathe. 